Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Wombat Rescue, which uh, is, I, I said it right up front, I'll repeat it, this is a lovely, charming, family-friendly, gateway-style game that, you know, is a perfect complement uh, to, uh, you know, say, Ticket to Ride or something of that ilk. You know, there's interesting decisions to be made, but it's still a game that's very easy to teach, very easy to explain, and unlike, say, Ticket to Ride, very, very thematic. I mean, you know, it's it's very, very much grounded. You know, the notion that these, you know, these wombats are limited by their little poop cubes that they're leaving all over the place, and, and really, uh, it's a pick-up-and-deliver game, but really, the main focus is on trying trying to build and navigate the scent networks that you have been building over the course of the game while trying to avoid the ever-present dingo. And it just works. I mean, I could definitely see playing this with kids of pretty much all ages, and you know, I think they'd get a kick out of it. You know, it's really very, very easy to kind of tweak the game to ratchet up or down the complexity of it and the difficulty of it. You know, if parents want to have a more challenging game while they play with their kids, give your kids the special powers, but don't give any to yourself, um, you know, as an example. Or have the kids only need to pick up two babies while you've got to pick up four, and you could you can definitely tweak so that, you know, parents could play with their kids. And, um, you know, when you... And also, you know, if you want to make it easier, don't put the uh, boulders on the table so there aren't that many obstacles that you have to try and maneuver around. But if you're a gamer like me and Jen, I think if you're, if you're, you can actually, this can be a very, very interesting and challenging game with a surprising amount of depth if you play with the boulders and you play with another variant. It's called the Dingo Eats Poop variant that's listed in the rule books. And what that is, is when you're controlling the dingo as you're moving him around, remember you always have a little bit of control over kind of, as he moves towards his target, whether he goes left or right, as he moves around, he will devour wombat poop. So he can be destroying. You can use the dingo if you're the player who currently, if you've recently been hit by the dingo, which obviously is probably a setback for you. You then get control of the dingo and you can direct him in such a way that he will start devouring, destroying the, the travel networks of your opponents. And that becomes, you know, and that suddenly opens up a lot of interesting opportunities, which will, I think, make the game much more interesting for gamer gamers too, if you don't mind a little bit of, you know, kind of screwage in the, in the gameplay. And, you know, it's interesting. I mean, Jen and I, we're very, very charmed by the game. We thought it was adorable. You know, it's, it's great that the game gives you an excuse to say poop over and over and over again. Um, our real problem with it is, I think it's maybe a little bit on the too, too light side for us. I mean, we don't really particularly enjoy Ticket to Ride much anymore these days because it just doesn't quite have enough. And to make this game tighter to introduce the whole, oh, well, I'll try and destroy your scent whenever is not something that we're particularly interested in. Now, there's actually another thing I should say about it. This is a ginormous board. It's absolutely huge. And as a two-player experience, I would say it's too big. Um, you, know, you know, you can really, I mean, I think the game is going to be at its best as more and more players are running around and you're instant, you know, as you're trying to do what you want to do, you're pushing players around more often. You're running afoul of their scent cubes because that will, you know, those create temporary blockers that slow you down as you, as they mix you up and you, oh, I don't need to smell that stuff. And, you know, it, it kind of slows you down. I think this game definitely wants to be played with more than two. With two, it's okay. With more, it would be better. Now, it's interesting. I should have grabbed this before I started filming Final Thoughts. Another recommendation the game lists in the rules is this. What I just showed you is kind of the standard layout of the board, but you can make your own boards. You can create any type. You know, these are just like four examples they have in my prototype rules. You can make checkpoint. You could, um, you know, make choke points or you know, interesting things so that there it does force a lot more bumping into each other between two players. And actually, another variant that's in the rules is the shorter game, where each player only has three babies to rescue, and four total tiles are removed from the board. Uh, which is actually a pretty cool idea, too. And maybe that would tighten things up for two-player a little bit more. I have to admit, Jen and I haven't tried that because, again, as charming as it is, and we can see, I mean, you can see from this art, and again, you can go to the Kickstarter link right up there on the screen. It's... It's just a lovely, lovely game, and I think this would definitely be a goer for us if we had muggles to play with. If we had, you know, people, you know, I would probably want to play this with new gamers 
more than Ticket to Ride because Ticket to Ride to me it's you know it works it's bright it's colorful but it's an inherently dry theme. There's nothing particularly charming or um, inviting about it unless you just happen to be a, a, a train nut. This game I think you know the you know the fundamental struggle of mamas trying to save their babies and dropping poop cubes all over the place and you know using that to sniff their way around. I think that is just adorable and I think it would you know kind of capture the imagination of people quite a bit more. So I think it would work as a perfect gateway. And then, if you have more players to play with, and if you don't mind a bit of screwage, you can have the heavy, more gamery style variant of it for, you know, to, to play with your hardcore gamer friends. But for me and Jen, we don't want to go screwage and we don't have other people to play with. So it's probably not a fit for us, but I can certainly see how this would be a fit for a lot of people. And uh, that's it, folks. That is Wombat Rescue. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know if I made any goofs along the way. Please point them out and Paolo will get them noted. And otherwise, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.